Welcome to the Civ and the Pylon, your regular old leftist podcast featuring me, Corey. And me, Sam. I am, oh yeah, I'm the Pylon and you're the Civ, right? I'm the Civ, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, we, we're going to have artwork coming and it looks cute as shit, I gotta say. Um, yeah, shit, how are you, man? I'm okay, it's... Um... It's the Lunar New Year, and I, those who don't know, I work at a Chinese restaurant. So we got killed last night. It was, like, really, really busy. And then I got home, and Rita had, my dog, had shit in my brand new boot, because she was upset. Are you serious? I was, I am dead serious. It, like, directly in my fucking boot. Um, Fuck. I started feeling really sorry for her, and then I saw that she had, like, against all odds and it's not even like a typical huge boot so like she clearly like perched on top of it for some time to get this turd directly inside of it oh um, god that's terrible yeah that was uh it was a hard night but otherwise i'm doing great drinking coffee i'm in my underwear i'm awake <laughs> nice. what kind what did, boots did you end up getting I was trying to sell you those Sorrels. Um, I got nice Sorrels this winter. It's nice. You know, I, I know that Sorrels are a great boot and whatever else, but I am uh, I'm vain with my footwear. It's it's my accessory uh, realm. I actually, my mom's put me on to some Eddie Bauer mock toes. They look just like Tim's, but they're real. They're like not, I mean, maybe they're made in China, but if they are, they're made by more skillful hands than uh, whoever makes Timberlands these uh, days. For sure. Are they warm as shit? I know, yeah, like, I think we're on they, day fucking 12 of negative temperatures as highs. It's just killing my morale. Yeah, it's terrible. Here, actually, it's been cold. Not as cold as y'all have it. I'm in Chicago, Corey's in Minnesota. Uh, but the snow keeps coming, and my... Uh, landlord is out of town so i've been shoveling i just feel like every single day i've shoveled for the last two weeks and then i woke up this morning and there's like four inches of snow on the ground dude i wish we had some fucking snow at least the snow looks good like snow here good, although in this like industrial city it just turns into a shit like within 36 hours it turns into that muddy nasty so i guess it's good that it keeps coming down to layer above the nasty but i'm over it i don't I'm over it yeah i sure. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get warm, and then it's just going to snow. I work from home. I don't got to commute for shit unless I want groceries. So it's like yeah. I have, like, a window that I stare out of for eight hours a day, <laughs> and I just want that scenery to change, like, a little yeah. bit, whether it's snow or melting snow or fucking, I don't know, something. Anything like. that's different. Yeah, I had a meeting with my boss yesterday, and it was like – I had to wear a hat because it was the first time in like two weeks that the sun actually like came through and I I couldn't see anything. I had the blinds open though. You gotta you gotta eat that sun up while you get it. You in the need winter. it. Well, yeah, I'm in like a garden level apartment and it's very dark if I want it to be, which is sometimes really nice. Although in this like Groundhog Day hell has been a little bit depressing and dark. Yeah. Speaking of, oh sorry. No, I'm, I was just trailing off, not saying anything. So please, be <laughs> Um, Another kind of depressing thing. With, it's not really depressing. But Miko Koivu retired. And I got to say, as somebody who, you know, the whole COVID shit's got me fucked up. I had an old acquaintance pass away a couple of weeks ago. And then another person in my friend circle pass away this week. And I've just been thinking about, like, what the fuck I'm actually doing with my time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like when shit like when somebody passes or if like your friend gets a promotion like i maybe it's just me but i kind of like think about my timeline and like what i'm actually doing but miko koivu retired this week and that also had me thinking about like time as a thing because for all but five of the wild seasons miko koivu has been a part of that team um i i don't know i've kind of learned to love hockey and like take my love of the sport with a grain of salt seeing how well the wild do year in and year out yeah. um yeah. but yeah um while the miko koivu was the first wild player uh to play a thousand games in a wild jersey it is. Think, I mean, like, he goes back to on. we were sophomores right in high school when he came in 
Yeah, yep. Um, I was in sixth grade when the Wilds came to uh, to fruition. Or no, eighth, yeah. seventh grade or something like that. But yeah, he had a little over 600 points in a Wild uniform. Um, he great in the face-offs with 40% success rate, um, which is insane. He's also really, really good at shootouts. He has he was seventh all time in shootout goals for the entire yeah, league. Which one is, dumb move that just worked. Or if he didn't time. use, yeah, he was known for that. But if he didn't use it, the whole <laughs> forehand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, um, one of my favorite memories though, um, which I, I it was an early afternoon game in Detroit. I want to say it was like 2011 or something. Uh, it's Wild versus Detroit, um, and this is when they I think I think they were still in the same uh, division or whatever. Yeah. Um, and this is still back when Detroit was fucking stacked. They had Zetterberg, yeah. uh, Datsuk was still in the league at this time. Brian Wafalski yeah. late in his career, he I liked him as a defenseman. Uh, Nicholas Cronwall, all three of those dudes were on the ice. It was hey, overtime. Paul. It you're gonna love this story then i I know what you're saying and i'm into it yep um um, while they're on the power play and somehow the puck the the wild are kind of shelling detroit in their own zone the puck gets thrown in the corner koivu chases after the puck in the corner and at just like the perfect time um there's like some weird shit going on in front like devin said aguchi and i think brian rafalski kind of duking it out the referee is in between the goal and the corner watching Devin Setaguchi and Brian Rafalski. And Ref- Cronwall is kind of preparing himself to just level Koivu into the boards and gain possession of the puck. How Cronwall did. He wasn't a good defenseman. He just hit people really he well. He hit people really hard. But and cheap. As Cronwall is crunched over... Koivu flips it in reverse and just knocks yep. him on his ass, and he yep. is down. Yep. He, he then regains possession of the puck, skates to the center, like right in between the circles, gets a beautiful shot on goal. All Detroit's like, what the fuck happened to Cronwall? Yep. Not even paying attention to the play. Yep. Like, hell is about to break loose. They're like, where the fuck is the penalty? Sadaguchi throws it in the go- in the goal. Game over. That's it. Jimmy Howard was pissed. Everybody on the Detroit bench was pissed. I was just like, he crumbled. He crumbled. He crumbled. He crumbled. And I remember just like picking my jaw up off the floor, being like, "Holy shit, that was insane!" Yeah, um, yeah it's great. People should YouTube it if if they don't know what we're talking about. It's really great. It's really great. And- but yeah, um, I don't want to bore people with stats or anything. But uh, end of career stats from Miko Koivu. I want to buy this motherfucker's jersey, man. Like I never like once he retired it. I was kind of like, oh shit, dude. He actually did some shit in the NHL, and, and Wild never really did anything with him, which is sad. He never got a Stanley Cup. Really great yeah. competitive player, though. Um, end of career stats though for him: one thousand thirty-five games played, two hundred six goals, five hundred and five assists, seven hundred eleven points. And 549 penalty minutes. Um, he was also... Two points in a wild sweater, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Um, yep. He was in Selkie contention for 07, 08, 08, 09, 16 and 17, and 17 and 18. Highest voting, voting he ever got for the Selkie was third in the 16, 17 season. He was voted to one all-star game but couldn't play to injury. And in 2011, he won the IAHF gold with Finland. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That Selkie shit, though. It's a solid career. I think he should have always received more Selkie love. I think he was one of the uh, one of the best defensive off- offensive defensive offensemen. Yeah, uh, what, the Selkie the thing. League. I don't know. I know you have some shit to say about the Selkie, and I think we can agree it's like kind of bullshit. Uh, yeah. Like it's not exactly a. Um, I, I don't think it's actually an award that's awarded to like the best defensive player. No, it's it's kind of a joke because if it's the best defensive player, there are several people that should be ahead. I mean, that should have got it. And it's just like I think the year that um, that 
Koivu didn't get it. Well, Patrice Bergeron got it, but then Ryan Kessler was voted ahead of him. And I'm like, sorry, Ryan Kessler is just a model of a... If Miko Koivu scored a little bit more goals and was otherwise a little bit worse at hockey and a bully, he would be Ryan Kessler. I don't think Ryan Kessler was ever that good, except for those like two years in, in Vancouver, uh, which paved the way for the rest of his career. I think it's a, I think it's a, a, a legit fucking uh, travesty that Kessler won it over Koivu, and I think it's a byproduct of a lack of love for Minnesota, and I, I, I don't like it. Yeah, and I if Kessler, absolutely, and honestly, if there's one point, if there's ever a point to be made about the plus minus, I think it maybe is the Selkie. Sure. Plus minus that year, Patrice Bergeron had a plus. Plus 12, Ryan Kessler had plus 8. Koivu, who's voted third as the best defensive, you know, Selkie's best defensive yeah. off player. Yep. 27. He's a plus 27. Yeah. So it's I'm just like. That probably wasn't that good because the Wild have never been that good. No. <laughs> um, and that's third. Yeah. The next person to breach the 20s, who also got 27, ranked 16th. You know who that is? Connor McDavid also got 27. Yeah. And it's just like insane. The next person yeah. is TJ Osha at 28, um, ranked 19th in the voting. And then at 32, um, you got Jason Zucker with a plus 34. So it's just like, hey. what the, like, I Although, don't know. I just don't Jason get it. Zucker wasn't actually that good at defense. Is not that good at defense. He's no. fast. No. He got, he, a little, he got a little grit. I love him. He's a Jew. I uh, like him. Um, pens are kind of turning stuff around. They're, they're fun to watch now. They're going to be okay. They're always going to be okay until uh, until the, the big dogs are gone. Yeah. If you have Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby on the team, you just kind of have to put it together to some extent. Yeah, I don't know, too. I don't know. I, plus, like, going back to the Koivu thing, it's like, I don't know. Like, the way the season started in Columbus with, like, Pierre Luc Dubois being benched and then getting yeah. traded, that whole that whole parade of nonsense, and then bringing Patrick Line, he gets benched yep. apparently because he mouthed off to assistant coach. Um, then the next game, that yeah, that game he played a total of I think it was like seven minutes, and then the next game. Everything's fine and dandy. He leads the point. He leads the team with uh, like twenty five minutes on ice, and it's just like, I don't know. It's yeah. Like you kind of want to hide like internal affairs, and I I just kind of feel like Tortorella is just like the kid that needs to leave the you know leave the leave the park with everybody's ball and all that shit like i just Yo, like, i don't fuck get john tortorella i feel so sad that miko koivu had to fucking play his last games in the nhl under that napoleonic little fucking shit i cannot stand the man i think he's i think he's overrated i think he's a prick i think he's a racist i think he's just trash um I, I fired towards. Uh, I know that he he drew breezed it on the on the kneeling thing, but four years ago, let's see, he said that he would bench any players who don't stand during the national anthem, and he went on to say, "You can't shut the fuck up about his son. I'm glad that your son serves in the military. I'm sure that you were a shitty father because you're a shitty person." Uh, what does he say? I get pretty caught up in representing my country. There's nothing like it. I just think, like, what a bootleg little fucking... And then his gimmicks, his whole, you know, he's, he's always trying to fight, uh, what's his name, the obnoxious man, your post. He's gotten run out of several towns. I just don't actually think he's that good. I think he got lucky in Tampa Bay for one year, and he's been eating on it, off of it for the rest of his career. I, I cannot stand the man. He... Was that what, like the last year with like LeCavier and like Martin St. Louis? Yeah, that? it was when LeCavier was still good. It was when it was when Steven Stamkos was was great, not just good. It was when I mean it it was like a, it was an immensely well built Lightning team, and it I just don't think that he gets the credit. I think he's a throwback to an era of coaches that 
is mostly fucking old white racist like tough guys um i think the the guy uh anaheim's coach before boudreaux randy carlisle i think he's oh, like a randy yeah. carlisle and i think that he's a bummer and i don't like him and i think uh i just i i cannot stand the man I really yeah don't, i don't know if you remember years ago when he like put his goon line up to fight uh, how could i forget <laughs> Whoever is, and then he's in the he's in the hallway screaming at uh, what's his name, big guy, probably the toughest, Brian McGratton. He's like he's two heads shorter than Brian McGratton. I just I wish like nothing else that Brian McGratton had had the opportunity to cave his face in. Just it would have been a worse knockout than Bugard Fedoric. It just like I can't. I don't know what possesses you to think that because uh, you've been coddled your whole life because you're a white dude with money, and that's John Tortorella. Yeah. Dude, do you want to know something wild about that? Um hey. Bugard Fedoric fight. Sure. Um me and my friend were hanging out and we were like smoking weed or whatever and we were like, man, this fucking it, that game was like I think on a Friday night or some shit and I was working at this pizza joint at the time. I had made like a bunch of money Thursday night for this corporate order or something that it was like the special weird thing and he like he also got like paid that day sure. so we're like all stoned and we find this dude that's like literally a mile and a half of us that's selling like upper level sides for super cheap i forget what it sure. was at that time but it was like 25 bucks for like third row upper level sides when they still had the super cheap yeah the fuck dude that game was like i want to say in like oh eight or something something crazy so we get there and we run in, it's that eastern gate that looks overlooks the bluffs, and when you go in, it's a, it's a huge gate, I think it's like gate one or something, and you kind of go in, and you you see you see like the ice right away, and we are like, we're all baked, and we're like, oh my god, this is wild. I shit you not, we walk in when that fight like happens. Yeah. It was just insane. We showed up late for that game, and I'll never forget being able to say, like, I was there when Bugard broke Todd Fedoric's face. But he caved in his face. If you haven't, you should also look that up. Although, content warning, that it's, shit is fucked it's up. It's a hard watch. It's, <laughs> it's hard really watch. brutal. It is. I've seen some, like, pretty gnarly fights in hockey and the world, and that's, like, it's up there. <laughs> just, like, you, you, you like... You can tell, like, just, like, the way he falls. And, like, I, we were far away, and we were like, oh, my God, he's hurt. Like, the way he falls, it's yeah. just, like, you know, he's just holding his face in, and it's just like, oh, my God, that man just broke his face. Did but, you know that I sold uh, lobsters to Derek Bugard? I did, because you've told me, but now the entire yeah, world knows. That's a story. That's you a know? pretty sweet story. It's a pretty tight story. He was kind of mean, but he was on Probably like 300 milligrams of Vicodin. It was pretty close to when he passed. RIP. And actually, I, I lie when I tell the story usually and say that I got his autograph for my dad. But uh, it was it was Jesse, my friend who used to work at Costco, who has also passed. Um, and Jesse was about the same size as Derek Bugard. So I just can't imagine what this poor guy, poor Bugard, who wanted to just quietly walked through the world and had to be approached by every fucking six foot eight Minnesota dumb dumb. Yeah. They could ask for an autograph for their boss. That's cool though. I don't think I've ever had like a run in as like so... a as like a thing. I've tiled a couple of NHL players' houses, but I got in trouble the one time I like posted about it on the internet, the general contractor was following me on Instagram and he was just like, never give away your clients' names online. And I was just like, it's not like I gave away his like, yeah. fucking location or anything, you uptight trick. So you're like, listen, I have like 12 friends who follow me on here. I don't think anybody's going to fucking, you know. And plus like, I don't know. I also, hang out with like a bunch of... What's that? You're tiling a bathroom. It's not like it's like sensitive information. No, yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> I hang out with like a bunch of like punks and hippies like nobody yeah. gives a fuck about no, it literally they'll just roll their eyes at the fact that you're posting about hockey again yeah and honestly too and i will say that this defenseman is known to be around minnesota 
and currently still plays for the Arizona Coyotes on a third line pairing. And I will let the world draw draw the conclusions to who that was. And I will not say that his initials are AG. Oops. Sorry, your super general contracting business folded, you uptight fuck. Uh, anyways, Sam, you owe me three bucks, but I don't I really care. Two bucks. No, you don't. Help me I break this down. $5 bet. Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. I lost two $5 bets, and I won a $7 bet, so I owe you $6. That's math? No, I owe you three. You're right. I owe you three. You're correct. It's actually the morning. I'm a fucking Sorry, dork with no- Usually you're the numbers guy. When we were doing a little barbecue thing, you were the numbers guy. I... At, uh... <laughs> Simple math. Dude, yeah, I was really. so... Math. That was like the one game I watched Saturday night, and I was just yeah. so bummed to see Edmonton lose, but fuck, that's such a fun rivalry to watch. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. time. Also... Love, love the Battle of Alberta. Yeah. And watching Anaheim and San Jose was really terrible. That was, like, really boring to watch after watching sure. that game. Um, I did not watch this m- that much hockey this week because, I don't know, it's just cold. It's just cold as fuck. I seriously <sighs> didn't do shit after work. I would, like, take a nap, watch a movie, and then, like, microwave a burrito and just go back to bed. It's just, I'm just waiting for this weather that to break. That sounds pretty dreamy, honestly. I would love for, I don't know. I did not have to go to work ever again in my life. I will say, I will say though, you get to hang out with people. You get actual people. I yeah. I have conversations with my cat Sam. That's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I do hang out with people. Even, even other, yeah. Uh, I did watch hockey last night though because I knew I had to prep for this podcast in some way, shape, or form. And sure, tell me about it, dude. I think. They're trying to make fighting a thing in the NHL. Yeah, I think they are too. I watched the numbers. They jumped in the last few days. Last night, though, uh, Bruins beat the Rangers 1-0. Really, like, fighting aside, yeah. really fun game. And seriously, sure. I want the Rangers to be competitive. Like, fuck them. I, I, I very much have an excite, like, just a generally excited eye with anybody who can move on skates. So it's sure. like, I, it doesn't take that much for me to be like into a hockey game yep. or team in, in general. But damn, the Rangers do look good. I want them to be competitive. It, uh, like, I feel like that team is centered around so much like old rivalries, New Jersey and Boston being That's the true. top two. And then not to mention like Montreal, just like the whole original six shit. I want yep. those teams to be competitive again. I think that will be good for hockey. But Bruins beat the Rangers last night, one to nothing. Um, three two fights. fights, two and a, um, two and a half fights. That's true. McAvoy, Mac- <laughs> what's that? He didn't get his gloves off. No, but he came to the aid of um Zobril, who was on the receiving end of. I'm not yeah. gonna say it was a bad hit, but he was just hunched over to get the puck, and Truba came hit. in for a hit, and it's just kind of Truba's a little bloodthirsty. He's a skill player, but he's uh he's got a little he's got some grit. I would be too if I was on the Rangers, honestly. Yeah, I mean, what pissed. terrible! I guess they like living in New York. Although I would hate living in visiting the one pick it up city. Uh, but yes, yeah, that's fair. It's a disappointing team. Yeah, but and then second fight, Trent Frederick versus Brendan Lemieux. Those dudes scored up right off the faceoff, which yeah. I thought they banned or something. Because, dude, I feel like I haven't seen that shit in, like, five years. It's rare, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Lemieux had, like, the old school, like, jackhammer shit going. It was fucking beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he is? Uh, you know, he was close. He is close friends with Tony Danglo. Oh um, man, I wish so Frederick I think, would uh, beat the wheels off yeah. him. Then. I know. I, I watched the fight in hopes that Frederick would knock him out, and he didn't. He, it was a good fight, but uh, yeah, Brendan Lemieux, no good. Go um, figure, because his dad was also a piece of shit. <laughs> and then the last fight of the night was, and honestly, maybe the only real fight, like most enjoyable. Yeah, it was most enjoyable, and honestly, most like old school. Uh, Pavel yeah. Buchnevich and Jeremy uh, Lazan. Uh, yeah. 
I don't. I didn't see how that one started, but holy shit, Bushnevich, both both of them dropping bombs on each other. I didn't know Bushnevich yeah. would ever really fight. I feel like he's known as like a skilled player. He is, but I thought he, he conducted himself pretty well. Honestly, I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, same. I mean, he lost the fight, but he uh, he was throwing them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really fun filled game. Fifty fucking eight penalty minutes assessed. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen those kind of numbers in a while. Thanks uh, for a yeah, I don't know. I've noticed more fights though this year. I feel like they're yeah. trying to lure people in, and honestly, I can't it really. It started kind of slow, but I feel like the last two or three weeks, honestly, after every other game got canceled, um, I think that they. It seems like it's jumped up, uh, which I, again, I'm. Uh, I know that there's plenty of things wrong with NHL fighting, but it is fun. It is fun. I, I think, I don't know. Somebody if it's... beat Ryan Reeves. Somebody beat Ryan Reeves. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty Delorier, who uh, I don't actually know anything about. His haircut makes me think that he's not a good person, but uh... <laughs> he. Uh... He, he kind of worked Ryan Reeves. It's pretty rare that uh, that anybody can even stand on, on skates with him. Nicholas Delorier done real good. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like once you kind of, like, get the championship title, you kind of just, like, get comfortable on the throne, so to speak. And... Yeah, but Ryan Reeves is a scary motherfucker. He just is. Just the way he moves his, like, upper body. I don't know if you've seen him, like, getting dressed or whatever. He looks like... Like Gordy Howe does in that famous picture of his like hilarious bicep. I feel like Ryan Reeves is on that level. Oh, word. that's insane. Um, scary dude. Yeah, but fucking fifty-eight penalty minutes assessed. Uh, like, I can't find like the average numbers for like penalties in like a game, but I feel like they it ain't bad. It's like maybe eight, but that's yeah. that was that was exciting to watch. Um, too with like the whole fighting thing, we have to remember that. With only interdivisional play, it's kind of like I don't know, kind of like playoff style hockey the whole yeah. year. So it's it and that's the that's I mean I think that the schedule's kind of dumb and I understand why they have to do it, but um, the the level of rivalry is really ramped up when you see somebody twenty times or whatever, you know, um, not twenty times, but these boys are gonna have problems with each other eight times playing back to back to back yeah um who did who does delorier play for is that kai arizona no san jose i think am i making this up he was on sabers but i think those days left sorry my internet's slow nick delorier Wikipedia lied to me. It says that he's unsigned, but I know he's not unsigned because he just won a fight. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Awesome. San Jose, maybe? Okay. <laughs> Anaheim. Anaheim. He's not Anaheim. One of those California teams. Anaheim. Yep. Yep. Oh, man. The retirement league out, out west. Must be nice. Holy shit. Put yourself up on the beach. Dude. I gotta, I gotta come forward. I gotta come out as um, kind of a stand here for a team that we shit on really hard in our first episode. Um, Florida Panthers. What the fuck, Corey? You know what their record is? No, because nobody cares because they're in Florida. Eight, one, and two. Wow. That's wild. Like, that's insane. Um, that is, that's crazy. Yeah, I, um, they, you know, their competition isn't really shit, and no. they're playing against like Detroit. No offense to Chicago. No offense. Nashville is really Detroit's kicking really them. Soft. They're they're not great. Um, <clears throat> Carolina, eight three and zero. Um, I like them. They're I playing like, each other this yeah. week. Those are gonna be some fun games to watch. Um. But yeah, I wouldn't it be nuts if this is just the year for Florida? I mean, I yeah, I don't think it's gonna remain because I just I still I can name like three people on that team, uh, and I think 
that Bobrowski's their uh, their goalie right now, right? Yes, and Chris He's their number Schreier. one. Yep. Um, no, they're tandem. They're doing tandem in. Okay. Florida. Okay. Yeah. Bob's one of those people who, like, when he's on, he is one of the best goalies in the league, I think. Um, I think he, like all goalies, he's a weirdo, and he has, like, pretty massive up and downs. But when he's doing his thing, I think he's a really good goalie. I also, I don't like Joel Quenneville, only because my dad always, he hated him when he was a player, although he admits that he's not sure why. Um, I think it's his, <laughs> it's his face, and I think my dad would probably agree with that. Uh, but you know, Quenneville, uh, he's got a hell of a, a record. He did build or he coached, um, the closest thing to a dynasty that we've had in the last, you know, 20 years or whatever, since maybe the Islanders of the eighties. Ekblad's great. I really like Ekblad. Um, I think Sasha Barkov's a fun player. There's not a whole lot else on that team, but who's Sha- you mean are. Alexander Barkov? Yeah. Sasha. Yep. What? They call him Sasha Barkov. I don't know. News to me, really? Yeah. I swear to God, look it up. Uh, Wenberg is good. Wenberg isn't that good anymore. I like that they picked up Duclair for nothing. Because uh, racism. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, Duclair is one of those players who puts up around 20 goals every year, but gets moved like he's a bad hockey player. And that's because he's black. Yeah. Uh, I hate Radko Gudas. I, you know, I'm, I like, I like the Flyers as like my third or fourth team, but he is just kind of a scumbag. He's a scumbag. He's a dirty, <laughs> dirty player. Um, I don't know. I look at, I look at Florida's squad though, and there's not a whole lot other than what I just said. Yeah, that's notable. I mean, so they have, be, I don't know. They have good depth. Two. Kind of. How? Um, Noel Kari, I like. He's like a pretty good. You just like him because he was on Boston. No, I well, I learned about him on Boston, but <laughs> he was a really, really good uh, checking forward. Like I think, like on the fourth line, like you can throw him out there also on the penalty <laughs> kill. Um, talking about good fourth lines is like something that Wild fans do because we're so used to mediocrity that we're like just fucking dying for a silver lining and so you're like well i bet we have the f- best fourth line in the league but it doesn't fucking mean anything because it doesn't really win games it doesn't really win games but also as a wild fan you kind of learn to you kind of you draft a player and they never really meet where they're supposed to be but then they end up yeah. as like a good third or fourth line and we kind of do like accept mediocrity but at the same time like a team like look at Tampa Bay's last, roster last year. Like they had depth up up and down four lines and three defensive pairings. Like I think it matters. But they also had like numerous stars to superstars. Florida has two. There's a lot more skill on on Tampa Bay than there is on Florida. Okay. I mean, right? I, I, no, I I agree with you. Yeah, but also, I think you but can't yeah. you can't like write off like the fact that like depth. On like depth of, on your forward lines. So depth is of course important. Look at Edmonton and how they're never going to do any good, despite the fact, you know. Um, I of course I just I think, I think it's a tactic that people who come from shitty sports cities use, like us. Okay, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Um, yeah, Islanders also started turning shit around last week. Um, they are. I like them. I like them too. I want them to do so good, especially since Homegirl in our leftist sports yeah. division uh, group, who is no longer with us, was a pretty yeah. huge stand for them. And I don't know. I just really. I like that team, man. Um, I do too. Yeah. I well, actually, I think I like Barry Trotz. I like Barry Trotz too. That dude drinks yeah. Old English. Does he? Yes, he does. Um, really? Absolutely. You didn't know this? Can you see no. my screen? No. Really? Uh, I mean, I probably could, but maybe do I do I press this share screen? No, you. I. You just. It should. I'm streaming to you. Um, oh. Man. Hold on. Don't don't worry about it. I'm gonna throw this in the okay. general chat real quick. Oh my God! I see it. I see it. 
<laughs> There's like I think this was That's with amazing. the Flyers, but it's quite great. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Also, okay, Barry? maybe Barry Trotz is responsible for my admiration of the Flyers and the Islanders. When was he the Flyers coach? Uh, this 2011 to 20... I don't know. Early... You sure? I'm pretty sure. No. No? Sorry. Capitals and uh, Preds. Fuck. Oh, I'm not a good hockey fan. <laughs> Why do I have a podcast? Why would anybody listen to this? But he won a cup with the, uh, with the cast. Yes, he did. And I, uh, here's the thing, though. Was he the coach of the Predators when they had Mike Ribeiro on there? Pretty horrible that a team... Well, first off, I think it's a weird fucking name. And then you sign Mike Ribeiro. He's a horrible person. If people aren't familiar, you should look it up. He's very um, what sex crimey. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. Um, yeah, like horribly babysitters and shit. What? Yeah, Mike Ribeiro. Sorry. And then he had this like long. I don't know. It was like, oh, it was alcoholism. Blah blah blah. And yet he like kept repeatedly. Assaulting his babysitters. It's fucked up. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that was. Did he ever play with Austin Watson? No, but Austin Watson's a real big bummer. No, he must have. Yeah, on the on the Preds, I think that he did for one year. Uh, what a team of scumbags! Austin yeah, and then you're called the Predators. I'm just like, it's too much for me. Life imitates art. Austin Watson's more fucking good. I love every time I watch him lose a fight. Yeah. Um, yeah, assaulted his girlfriend. Yeah, and is now doing a lot of, like, tongue service. I don't know. I just, like, if you assaulted your girlfriend and then you become an advocate for domestic assault awareness, I just don't believe him. I think that it's, it's a, a trick to make people look at you better. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Wayne Simmons and Willie O'Ree. Uh, yeah. Wayne Simmons, though, I didn't really have time this week due to seasonal affective disorder to uh, dive in. Heard and that. I apologize. Um, I want to touch more, but that dude broke his wrist. He's out for six to eight weeks. And then I also... Broke his to... wrist beating up what's his name, right? I believe he did. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, but I fell on my bike this week and I uh, didn't break my wrist, but I know what it's like, Wayne. Fuck, that's right. What, dude, what happened? And there's, uh, there's this underpass on Damon, um, which is like the nicer bike path street. Um, and there was just like, I don't know how, there was like a huge frozen mound of ugly brown slush. And I like started to swerve and then I had to break and then I just like fell off. And then there was a car coming right to my left. So I had to like bounce off my left wrist and I'm heavy in life right now. So it hurt a lot. That's all. It's the whole story. And then it happened uh, while I was walking home from work that night. I fell as well, which was upsetting. Jesus Christ. Hurt less. I'm sorry. Those Chicago streets too, they're kinda they're more narrow than they are in Minneapolis, huh? You know, the issue is that they don't uh especially I don't live in an amazing neighborhood, so like nothing literally they don't plow. They plow downtown, but otherwise they just there's like no snow removal whatsoever in almost all of Chicago and definitely none in my neighborhood, which is annoying. Like they don't like they run the plows once during the storm or like Saint Paul like where it's run- like shitty. It's like St. Paul, but worse. I, I mean, I guess they, they run plows on, like, the major streets to, like, say they did it, but it's really not. It's bad. They're really bad at snow cleanup. Anyways. Brutal. Anyway, sorry. All right, Wayne Simmons, though, off to a strong start. Um, five games played, um, five points, and I think he's only on contract. I think it's all goals. Yep, all goals. He's on contract, I think, for buck five. Yep. And he throws hands. I liked hands. the signing. Yep. I like the signing a lot. I think he's a good locker room guy. I think he's got a lot of, uh, he's a little dirty, but but uh, not in a horrible way. And, and 
honestly, you want that grit on a team sometimes, especially from somebody who can actually produce. And he is past his um, past his prime. But Wayne Simmons, good offensive. He's a good power forward. Absolutely, and has been for years. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then Willie O'Ree. I wanted to do a little bit on him because Bruins were supposed to retire his number this Tuesday. They're pushing that yeah. back to 2022 when there's fans in the stands. Sure. And hopefully we'll still do, still be doing this in a year. And I'll I want to do that then. I feel like that gives him the justice he yeah. deserves. Yeah. Um, Should we get a whole episode. Um. But yeah. Um. Couple of fun games tonight. Um, Toronto and Montreal. Um, sure. Two, no, one and two in the Northern Division. And then, um, let's see here. Boston plays see. Islanders. Oh, I'll take Islanders. Ooh, damn. All right, I'll take the Bruins. Five on that. You have to. They're your team. I know. I know I will. Um, that's what that so it works for <laughs> Oh jeez. Um and then later tonight, um Calgary plays Vancouver. I'm not putting money on that, but I just want to say I'm not putting money on that. Vancouver Calgary wins, is, I think they will. They are going to win. Um Vancouver's bad. Vancouver's really fucking bad. Like really bad. Yeah. Um It's a little weird. I think they should be better, but they should be way better. Um, they got some kids, you know. I do. Uh, you got anything for next week? Um, uh, you know, I have a couple goofy little gimmicks, but I figured we'd roll them out as a, as a nice little surprise for people. Just real quick, the Brian Burke move for the for the pens. It's weird. The whole pens thing. It's weird. The whole pens. Ron Hextel. Ron Hextel is GM. Yeah, I don't Dude, get it. We're living in yeah. a simulation, and the motherboard yeah. is frying. What the fuck? Yeah. Yep, one hundred percent. I do not fucking get it. It's really weird. We'll see what happens. Brian Burke, by the way, was also a uh, he was a, a John Tortorella. I think I, I think he also Drew Brees did, and and has since walked back his comments on kneeling players. But he was also in two thousand sixteen, um, a real big doofus about it. What the fuck is wrong with people like? I don't know. You think like shut the fuck up. You're just you're like a rich white dude. Just shut the fuck up. No, it's seriously. And it's just like what you, the only thing you have to worry about is like somebody speaking up because they feel like they're not getting an equitable hack at it. Fuck you. Like listen, so we need to st- terrifying to you. No, yeah. Absolutely. Um <laughs> cool. Yeah. I will do uh more prep for next week. Me too. I'm sorry that the Lunar New Year really kicked my ass, everyone. Yeah, and it's just being negative. Fucking 50 wind chill. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Is it negative feeling. 50 wind chill? Yeah, man. I, so oh, that's my, right. All right. Cool. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah, uh, hope everybody has a wonderful week and stays warm. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take them all, take them all, put them up against the wall.